we're going to get into lecture four, which is Flory Huggins theory and mixing polymer blends. So, so far, we've been dealing with single polymer chains, thinking about, okay, if this chain is in different solvents, how it's going to behave. But we've been primarily focused on how do single chains behave? How do we characterize the molecular weight, number average? How do we uh, characterize PDI? How do we characterize the different intermolecular interactions on the order of KT? How do we figure out our R squared M to N distance? We're experts on that now. But we've been focused on single polymer chains. But oftentimes we'll be mixing uh, polymer chains or blending, creating polymer blends or putting our polymers in different solvents. And we want to, again, be able to describe energetically um, how those polymers are going to behave. Will they mix? Will they not mix? Uh, and what are the driving forces, again, energetically um, to create polymer blends? So just for some reference, um, especially if you haven't taken um, kind of what I call a materials the thermodynamics course, we're going to be doing or a kind of a chemical thermodynamics course. We're going to be going a little bit into um, uh, basically some thermodynamics and some chemistry. But again, keep the large view. Why are we, you know, we're trying to figure out when polymer blends will mix or when polymers will basically if I have polymer A here, polymer B, B, and polymer A, when will they mix? Under what conditions? Under what temperatures? Uh, under what pH? Uh, we're going to try to figure out, again, thermodynamically, when will they mix? Will they not mix? Will they always mix? Will they never mix? Uh, <laughs> again, so that's what we're kind of going to try to figure out today. So why um, why are polymer blends important? Um, so again, we're going to look at uh, basically Flory Huggins theory is basically hopefully hopefully you've heard of Bragg Williams theory. Um, so that is kind of a thermo. Um, this is basically for basically mixing of like gas particles. It's very general. Um, so hopefully you've worked on that. But Flory Huggins basically extends. Um, it's basically an extension. Obviously much more complicated. But Flory Huggins builds upon the Bragg Williams kind of uh, thermodynamic theory of kind of mixing and extends it to polymers. Um, so uh, the beauty of this and why we're studying polymer blends or why are we trying to figure out um, when polymers will mix, when they won't mix, is it's going to allow us to generate phase diagrams, um, understand fractionization by molecular weight. We're going to be able to understand rubber elasticity. Uh, we are going to be able to look at uh, basically how the melting point will change. We're going to be able to understand self-assembly. So polymers will, um, certain polymers at certain conditions, will self-assemble into structures, either uh, basically lamella, rods, uh, and so we're going to see some like really kind of cool effects uh, into lamella, so just like this, into spheres where one polymer is coated on this other, and again, you could kind of make these different structures on your, um, basically you could kind of create lines, nanometer length scale, um, kind of circuits using block copolymer self-assembly. So, uh, but we need to understand this Flory uh, Huggins framework uh, these thermodynamic driving forces to why polymers want to mix or kind of associate with another polymer in order to kind of uh, really appreciate, understand, and then uh, design kind of these novel um, behaviors in polymers. So the biggest thing is that we're going to see here in a second, it's going to go uh, harken back to this idea of entropic versus enthalpic contributions and driving forces. So why are we dealing with polymer blends? Again, aside from all those cool parameters or cool properties, um, one of the kind of uh, examples you've probably uh, encountered in your everyday life is high impact polystyrene. So high impact polystyrene, lots of times it's like in your kind of coffee cups, um, obviously not the styrofoam, but the, uh, you know, your other kind of plastic uh, <laughs> cups. They're most likely made of high impact polystyrene. High impact polystyrene is a blend of polystyrene, which is very, very stiff, but brittle. So as you can see here, the elongation at failure, fairly... Um, uh, fairly small for a polymer. Again, polymers are usually much more ductile. Polymers typically fail at uh, these strains at like could be one to ten, uh, especially for an elastomer. But uh, polystyrene will typically fail. Um, I'm sure polystyrene. I'm trying to remember back to our lab. Uh, <laughs> uh, it could be like about 0 0.3, you know, strain. Anyways, uh, it doesn't matter too much. Um, fact is, polystyrene is very brittle. But when you mix it. Uh, and you blend it with a much more ductile polybutadiene, PB. This is just rubber. So, rubber. Not our favorite silly putty, uh, which is PDMS with a TG of around minus 123 degrees C. Well, I remember my polymer engineering course with Professor Roy, Roy Lance at MIT. Uh, <laughs> we had to memorize all those uh, TGs. Anyways, um, 
When you blend those polymers, you create a material called uh, high impact polystyrene. So look at this difference in behavior between my polystyrene and my high impact polystyrene. I get, I lose a little bit of stiffness, granted, but look at how much I gain on my uh, ductility at failure. Why is that? Because I have this blue polystyrene matrix, I have these kind of inclusions or this kind of, you know, uh, these polybutadiene like, you know, uh, rubbery or softer spots in my material. So what happens in this material, when a microcrack starts to um, propagate, when it hits these regions here, these rubbery regions, these kind of, um, I don't want to say softer regions, but again, these more ductile, these rubbery regions, as opposed to kind of your uh, more brittle polystyrene matrix, it blunts the crack. So the crack stops propagating. So again, you're, the, the crack cannot reach that critical size that uh, uh, basically creates failure uh, or catastrophic failure in the material. So as cracks are initiated, they propagate, and if they hit here, they're done. So you have lots of these kind of uh, in basically uh, softer, or again, not softer, excuse me. <laughs> um, you have these more rubbery parts, uh, and with basically with material with lower TG uh, than your polystyrene. So they are going to blunt those cracks, and you get this increase in toughness. So uh, when you're dealing with polymer blends or polymer solutions, um, all you're basically doing is you start with two pure phases, and then the two phases will spontaneously mix, or they will not mix. Um, and we know that spontaneous reactions, uh, if they mix spontaneously, we know that the change in free energy of the system upon mixing must decrease. So uh, what are going to be the two competing factors to see if my delta G of mixing is going to decrease or not? What's going to be the competition? Yep, I could hear you all, uh, even over uh, the internet. <laughs> uh, it is going to be a competition versus entropy versus entropy here versus enthalpy. You got it. So the difference here, or not the difference, but entropy here always increases. So when I, if I have basically a system, and if I, let me just this here. If I have a system, I'm going to do this. So I initially basically block this. So I have a system like this. Let me change color. So I have particles on this side. I have particles on this side. So initially, there's that kind of barrier, that line. So that's my state one. If now I remove that at some time, I remove that so there's no more kind of barrier here, there's no more line. I've removed that kind of uh, basically, you know, kind of slot in my box. What's going to happen? Just based on pure entropy, where are the, where are the particles going to want to move? Well, they're going to want to mix, right? Some are going to be over here, some are going to be over here. There's going to be green, you know, on this side and this side. There's kind of, again, we know kinetically there's a driving force because there's a concentration gradient. So they're going to want to kind of move and uh, uh, basically kind of mix. Now, the reason that they want to do this is it's an entropic driving force. Two mixed species are going to have, in this microstate, if they're all on this side, all on this side, what's my number of configurations? It's only one. All the particles on uh, A or B or what you know, blue have to be on this side. All particles of green have to be on that side. If I allow them to mix, if two species mix, now my number of microstates is much, 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 much greater than one. So I have more configurational entropy um, or confirmation, you know, more configurational entropy. That is actually the, you know, uh, the uh, correct phrase, uh, although it could be configurational, combinatorial, translational in nature, you know. Uh, but anyways, there's an entropic driving force because when they mix, my number of microstates increases. No, my S scales with my number of microstates. So entropy, uh, the increase in entropy due to more configurations is always going to be the driving force to mix. So entropy is always going to drive towards it wants to mix. Now, what stops us? Unfortunately, it's enthalpy. So enthalpy, usually two mix two species will have some interaction between them. So the interaction between, uh, basically, I'm going to name this as A here, A and B. There's going to be some interaction between A and B. Unfortunately, most of the time, that's going to be positive. Now, if my AB interaction between AB is negative, what's going to happen? I'm always going to mix, right? Because this entropy of mixing is always going to be positive. If my enthalpic interaction, if they would like to be next to each other and my energy is negative, then 
<laughs> I don't have to worry about anything. At all temperatures, all times, they will always, you know, unless that energy changes the temperature, I'm always going to mix. Unfortunately, this is not a common scenario. So instead, there's usually going to be A and B are not going to really want to mix with one another. There's going to be some unfavorable interaction or a positive interaction, positive energetic. So there's going to be competition where A and B associating, this, it's going to raise your uh, entropy of mixing, whereas your delta S of mixing is going to increase. But again, you do that minus sign in our Gibbs free energy, that's going to cause our, um, as we increase entropy, that will drive our free energy down. So again, it's going to be this competition between the increase in entropy due to more configurations. And is it enough? Is this increase in delta S, is our delta S mixing increase enough to overcome our equivalent energetic increase in delta H mixing? So is it able to overcome the energy penalty associated with mixing two species with unfavorable inter enthalpic interactions? So, well, no, again, I'm going to hammer this again and again. Delta S mixing drives, we want to mix. Delta H, that contribution, separate. So that will want to keep our materials phase separated. Uh, again, so mixing, mixing is driven by the increase in entropy, more configurations, but uh, there's, it needs to overcome the energy associated with being two unfavorable interactions. A and B do not want to be together. We have to force them together uh, by, uh, due to entropy and that increase in uh, enthalpic and in, uh, entropic microstates. So yeah, that's kind of the basic idea here. So we are going to talk about first Bragg-Williams theory, which is just basically looking at gas molecules. Uh, and then we're going to look uh, and develop our Flory huggins theory. So that is going to be applying you know, very similar concepts to... Uh, so we're going to build upon that Bragg's William theory, which is a little bit simple. We're going to adapt it for polymers, and then we'll be able to create phase diagrams. So much more on that coming up, uh, and I will see you all next time. Thanks. Bye.